Welcome back to Amerisogyny. I'm your host, Hannah Blue. You're listening to episode 34, Deconstructing the Global War on Women. But before I get into our episode, listeners, I want to give a shout out to two people who have passed and I am absolutely shocked by their deaths. The first one is Irish Grinstead of the R&B girl group 702. Now everybody thinks they had the best music of their time, but I'm telling you, 90s music, we had the best era, okay? 702 is famous for the songs Where My Girls At, Stilo, and Get It Together. And let me tell you, if you grew up in the 90s, Get It Together was played on every major radio station. Everybody was bumping it in their cars. Girls sang it around their high schools. It was a huge hit. 702 was big, okay? But if you can even remember before that, 702 made a song with the group Subway called This Little Game. And we had no business singing that song as children, but it was the jam. Her sister Lamisha broke the news on Instagram. They had a sister named Orish who died from kidney failure in 2008. And she was only 27. Irish was only 43 and she was battling an illness that the family did not name. But her sister Lamisha said, it is with great sadness that I have to let you know that my beautiful sister and friend has passed away this evening. She has had a long battle and she is finally at peace. That girl was as bright as the stars. She was not only beautiful on the outside, but also within. Sharing the stage with her was a joy I will cherish for the rest of my life. We, the family, ask for prayers and respect for our privacy as we grieve an outstanding loss to our family. And Irish is also an outstanding loss to us. We loved her. We love 702. Irish, rest in peace. You'll be missed. The second loss I want to address is Billy Miller. He was an actor on The Young and the Restless. He played Billy Abbott. And he also played Jason Morgan on General Hospital and later Drew Kane. This past Sunday, he would have been 44 years old. His statement read, the actor was struggling with manic depression when he died. This is why I focus strictly on mental health. Now, this was a man that was loved by fans. How do you go from being on two of the biggest daytime TV shows to ending up like this? The Young and the Restless and General Hospital are so huge, they've avoided cancellation. That's the power behind the fandom of these shows. I bring home this point all the time. It doesn't matter who you are, how well you're known, how much money you have, what show you're working on, what movie you're in. At any time, mental health can creep up and take over. I know because I suffer from depression myself. Just this past week, I didn't feel like myself. So I couldn't record episode 34. It affects your life in every way possible. I think of mental health like a bomb. You know how you watch those high profile shows where there's high suspense and there's always a team that's been assigned to run in and handle the bomb before it explodes. They always manage to get to it just in the nick of time, just before it goes off. But when you're dealing with a bomb that's called mental health, there is no hero that's going to come in and save you. You have to find a way to detonate the bomb that's going to go off in your head before it destroys you. It can be a lifelong struggle and not everybody will make it. I don't know how Billy was handling his mental health and it's none of my business. I'm not going to speculate. Some people take medication. Some people get counseling. And even with all that, sometimes mental health can still take you up out of here, meaning it could kill you. I enjoyed watching Billy on General Hospital and I am so sad that he lost his fight to live. He was an amazing actor and will truly be missed. My opinion, 
There is no surefire foolproof way to beat mental illness. I envision my mind as a muscle that has to be exercised just as I do my biceps or hamstrings. How do I exercise my mind? I want you to picture a squirrel squirreling away food for the winter. I squirrel away positive things. I pay attention to the people that I'm around and I only surround myself with positive people. I pay attention to what sites I'm on, on social media. I don't get on sites where there's a lot of gossip and toxic comments. Because just like that little squirrel who hides food for the winter and pulls it out when he's ready to nourish his body, that's what you need for your mind. You need to store things away to pull them out when you need them later to nourish your mind. So when I found myself suffering from a mental attack, I began pulling out all kinds of things, positive shows that I watched, affirmations, scripture. And the next day, while I wasn't feeling 100%, I was much better than I was the day before. If you only store up negativity, you're not going to have anything to pull out to help you when the time comes. For some of us, mental illness is a cycle. We have highs and lows. And when the lows come, you need something to fight them off. There's a scripture that I think about. It says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's Philippians 4.8. I make no secret that I am a Christian who believes in Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and my Savior. I realize not everyone believes in God, and that's fine with me. I just want you to be mentally healthy so you stick around for a while. Now, let's get into the heart of the matter of episode 34. There's a war on women, and it's not pretty. I've said before, there is no country on this planet where women are admired, respected, and given the same treatment as men. We have to work twice as hard as men and still get paid less. We are viewed as sexual objects, used and abused all over the world. If there is anything I want women to stop doing is deluding themselves, thinking that men outside of the U.S., are princes and better than the men in their own countries. They are not. Men are men all over the world. You have good men, you have bad men. And just because a man is born in another country, it doesn't mean he's going to treat you better simply because he's different. Our first stop, Nicosia, Cyprus. A British woman says that she was gang raped by five Israelis. Well, they're going to stand for trial. And enter pleas to charges that include rape, sexual assault, sexual harassment, and abduction. The trial begins on October 5th, and the lawyer isn't holding back. He says the victim is lying in so many words. He says there are many contradictory points which undermine the veracity of the claims. He says his clients will plead not guilty to the charges because... As things now stand, we don't think that any crime has been committed. In my country, the USA, people are supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. For everywhere else, it's a guessing game. The British woman is 20 years old and she picked out five Israelis from a police lineup. She said she was raped while attending a hotel pool party. According to the witness, One of the five men took her hand by force and took her to his room. She said he tried to remove her bathing suit while she pleaded with him to let her leave. She said the other suspects entered the room and one had intercourse with her against her will and another forced her to perform oral sex while two others held her down on the bed. She also stated another suspect held her against the wall and raped her. She says she locked herself in the bathroom and began shouting for help. She was only able to get away by pushing the suspects aside 
and rejoining her friends. Now, this happened in Aia Napa, and it's a popular tourist site for young people. We'll just wait and see what's going to go on with this trial. Our next stop, Portugal. A Portuguese president has come under fire over disgusting remarks he made about a woman's cleavage. Portuguese President Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa has been asked to issue an apology for shooting his reckless mouth off. But the 74-year-old pervert doesn't think he has anything to apologize about. He visited Toronto, Canada and was greeted by a mother and daughter. They are Portuguese. And he said, the daughter is more beautiful than the mother, but the daughter might catch the flu yet. Have you seen her cleavage? And they say he walked away smirking. Oh, well. That got people in an uproar. Isabel Moreira says he should apologize. Sexism is killing us. It's not a joke. Moreira is a Socialist Party MP. And she said, this is 2023. You can't just walk up to a woman you don't know and make a joke about her weight or about her cleavage. Yeah, DeSosa is fat phobic too. An overweight woman was offered a chair and De Sosa said, can the chair take it? De Sosa is apologizing for none of it. He says, it wasn't a sexist comment. I didn't think of it like that. And neither did the young woman or the old ladies. It wasn't sexist at all. Now, who is he to call someone old? What an asshole. Our next stop, Spain. Luis Rubiales a former football association chief, was asked to resign three weeks after he forcibly kissed a female footballer. The footballer's name is Jenny Hermoso. Now, clearly this was sexual assault, and it cost Rubiales his roles as president of the Royal Spanish Football Federation and as a UEFA vice president. Miss Hermoso says, I did not enjoy that meaning the kiss he planted on her lips by force. Hermoso was granted a restraining order against the former president. Her lawyer says, we maintain what we've said from the beginning. It was a non-consensual kiss. And one could ask, well, why did this happen in the first place? Spain defeated England for their first World Cup title in Sydney this past August. That was no reason to kiss her. And a Spanish court agreed a judge banned Rubiales from coming within 200 meters of Jenny Hermoso. It was a stupid thing to do. But it just goes to show that men will use any excuse to harass women. Our next stop, Afghanistan. Two years ago, the Taliban banned girls from going to school. According to the UN Children's Agency, more than one million girls are affected by the ban. Now, this gained worldwide backlash, but the Taliban did not back down. They took it further. They excluded women and girls from higher education, public spaces like parks, and even jobs. Now, of course, the Taliban didn't ban boys, but they banned girls because they said it didn't comply with their interpretation of Islamic law or Sharia. And if I'm saying that wrong, please forgive me. Now, this is nothing new. They also stopped girls from going to school in the 90s. The Taliban leadership believes women should not participate in anything social or public and should especially be kept away from education. And what the Taliban is doing is indeed hurting people. Female medical students had to stop their studies. Healthcare is one of the few windows that are open to Afghan women. Now that's being jeopardized. Afghan women are forbidden to see male doctors. So who's going to suffer? Their kids. Female doctors, midwives, gynecologists, and nurses are needed. An email sent to the Associated Press read, In a strictly gender-segregated society, how will Afghan women be able to get the most basic health care services if there are no female professionals to treat them? Here's how the ban is affecting the country, and I quote, 
Tens of thousands of teachers have lost their jobs. Support staff are also unemployed. Private institutions and businesses that benefited financially from girls' education have been hit. Afghanistan has a shattered economy and people's incomes are plummeting. Excluding women from the job market hurts the country's GDP to the cost of billions of dollars. Now that's according to UNICEF. UN data says birth rates are higher among Afghan girls who are 15 through 19 who don't have secondary or higher education. A woman's education can also determine if her children have basic immunization and if her daughters are married by the age of 18. The lack of women's education is among the major drivers of deprivation. Well, that's what the Taliban wants for women and girls to be uneducated and lie on their backs and have babies. When you take a look, I mean a real look, at how women are treated all over the world, it's astonishing and sad. Our next stop, the UK. Russell Brand is under fire. Several women have come out and said he sexually assaulted them. One of the victims, called Nadia, claimed that Brand raped her against a wall in his home in L.A. in 2012. She says she got away by pretending she needed to use the bathroom and received help at the Rape Treatment Center at UCLA Santa Monica Medical Center. Now, this happened in the U.S., but Brand is not an American. He's from the U.K. She said that he sent her several text messages, I hope she kept them, saying, I'm sorry, That was crazy and selfish. I hope you can forgive me. I know that you're a lovely person. X. Nadia said she replied to Bran and said he had scared the shit out of her and said that when a girl says no, it means no. To this, he allegedly responded, I will make this up to you somehow with love and kindness. Not my original idea, which was more sex. You've been lovely to me and I'm embarrassed by my behavior. Sorry, X. If this is true, he's disgusting. Here's a smoking gun. She kept the records from when she was treated, and the notes from the center said she didn't want to press charges against Bran because she didn't think her words would mean anything up against his. And she was worried that if she came out and said what he did, her name would be dragged through the dirt. Now, how many victims relive that fear each and every day after they've been assaulted. It's not fair. Nadia says she went through five months of therapy but did not press charges. She later wrote a letter to Bran attempting to regain some of her power in the process. Well, it looks as if the chickens are coming home to roost for Bran. Another woman says she was 16 at the time she met Bran and they had a three-month emotionally and sexually abusive relationship. She says he engaged in grooming behavior and forced his penis down her throat during sex, making her choke and causing her to punch him in the stomach to get him to stop. She also says he removed a condom during sex without her knowledge in another incident. Now, in the UK, the age of consent is 16. That doesn't mean what he allegedly did was right. And I'm saying allegedly because he hasn't been proven guilty. The woman says she didn't recognize the behavior of a groomer back then. And he would frequently refer to her as the child. Yuck. A third woman said Brand sexually assaulted her in 2013 while they were working on a project together in L.A. She says he threatened to take legal action against her if she told anyone. So she didn't because she didn't want her career to be impacted. Brand's own personal assistant, Helen Berger, claims he would show his friends intimate pictures of other women and one woman she recognized. Female comedians were warned to stay away from Brand and one claims he would chase her backstage and bite her face despite her protests. Another comedian, Daniel Sloss, says, I know for many, many years that women have been warning each other about Russell. Now, Brand is refuting all of this. 
He claims that all the relationships he had were consensual. According to Brand, these allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. Mm. We don't know if all of this is true, but what we do know is Russell Brand's management agency has terminated all professional ties to him. Tavistock Wood Management Agency said it believed it was horribly misled by him. So it's not really looking good for Russell Brand. I've never really followed his career. I know that he was married to Katy Perry. And honestly, even before all this came out, he's always given me the creeps. If the women take this further, more than likely he'll be tried in a U.S. court or he'll settle out of court. Either way. Brand is innocent until proven guilty. What I don't like is the comments people make. Well, why did it take so long for the victims to come out? Who says that there should be a time frame for women to come out when they've been hurt? That's what women fear, being judged and ridiculed in the public when they try to stand up for themselves. Many of the stories I brought to you today involve high-profile men. I don't blame the women for being scared. The world does not create blankets for victims of sexual assault to comfort them and make them feel believed. So when they hesitate to speak their truth, it shouldn't come as a surprise. Women have to fight for their names and reputations all the time. And I don't know if Russell Brand is guilty, but I know this. What's done in the dark comes to light. And I'm out of time. If this episode was informative or helped you in any way, feel free to follow me on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Samsung, Spotify, or wherever you listen from. I will be back with more stories. Be easy. Have a great weekend. And as always, God bless.